YouTubers, what's happening? We are got a new video for you today on the Epervis Blades Progeny. This is his second knife. Uh, the first one is the Primordial, which I did review also on this channel, which was a great knife. Um, I do really like his designs. So this one is actually made by Best Tech Knives. I believe the last one was by Wii, if I'm saying I may be wrong on that. Pretty sure I'm right. Um, and this one is made by Best Tech Knives. So, Best Tech is definitely a, one of those reputable Chinese companies that makes good quality knives. So, the quality here is no exception. So, let's go over the basic specs and we'll get into the uh, review. 7.625 overall length with a blade of 3 and quarter inches. Cutting edge of 3.125 because of this nice choil here that is more of a sharpening choil. But I do appreciate that. Um, blade th width is 1 inch. Blade thickness is 0.15. Well, I've got a little bit different measurement on that. Bull Arm 390, uh, Sheep's Foot, Warren's Cliff style blade. Uh, you got a flat grind with a stonewash uh, finish with satin flats. 4.375 on the handle and point half an inch on the thickness here. Obviously titanium, uh, weighs 3.72 ounces. Comes in multiple colors. You got a, a, this bluish, purple, blurple. You've got a green, you've got gold, and then just plain... Um, so wash titanium. So there are your basic specs on that guy. Let's do look at the packaging real quick. You get this nice, you know, AP um, logo with the box. Then and then you get your plastic wrap and a nice padded leather, not leather, padded vinyl case um, with two slots here. I like Wee's a little bit better. They give you a lot more um, padding, I guess I would call it, but. It's, it's appreciated when you get a case like this, especially if you store your knives and stuff. I mean, I wish ZT and some of these other companies would get on the board there with that. Because it seems like every Chinese company does it now. Kaiser, Wii, Best Tech, um, all these guys do. So, Alright, so let's do some size comparisons and we'll get into the detailed review here. So I've got the Benchmade 940 here as a as a example here very very similar in size to a 940 the baby machine one of my all-time favorites is about the same size you go butt to butt as Jim Skelton used to always say and we'll throw in a Chris Reeve Sabenza small Singo in there um, you can see it's, it's bigger than that so it's kind of in between the it's very very similar to a 940 honestly that's probably the best comparison there look at the handles and everything they're very similar so if you like the size of the 940 you'll definitely appreciate this size it's a good size for sure so there's your size comparisons all right so let's get into the reviews and i'm trying to follow a kind of a not a script we'll call it but kind of just a pattern a um of when i do reviews most of the time i stick to it and a lot of times i don't so <laughs> Trying to be a little bit more, less random, I guess. Um, so we're going to talk about a few things. Uh, fit and finish, ergonomics, aesthetics, the action, um, what I call sliceability, which is not a word, but I made it up. Uh, how it carries and value. And then the last thing is what I call the X factor. So let's talk about fit and finish on this guy. It's really well made. Uh, like I said, Best Tech does a great job, and they do make some budget knives that are some of the better budget knives out there they also make some premium knives and they do a great job manufacturing this is no no um different on the progeny uh one thing that's nice is that they do all these different colors vanization um and then they offer you know they have a nice two-tone um they call this a bronze definitely more of a gold to me than bronze but whatever uh, we'll get to that later on the backspacer and the clip to kind of give it an offset you have on all the models you have that option which is kind of nice um, another great thing that they did on the fit and finish on this is they champ they polished all the chamfers on the edges so if you can see let's see if the light or the camera picks it up really well you kind of have to get the light to hit it but all these chamfered edges are all polished on the uh, handles. It's a really nice feature that you don't see a lot on knives and it's just a really a really nice aesthetic. It adds a lot to the knife and it, it's definitely a little bit more um, you know just an extra touch that they did that you know you don't pay for that extra touch. So I really really like that. Um, 
I like that they offer the knife in many different colors and anodizations, and they don't charge more. I think of like when you buy a knife on Mass Drop and you buy just the plain one, it's a certain price. But then when you start adding anno and different colors, that they add twenty bucks, ten bucks, fifteen bucks. You know, I kind of I like how they didn't do that. I like how they just kind of offer all those those options and they kept it all at the same price. Um, the stone washing is very well done on the blade and on the handle, and I really like the satin flats. The two-tone look on the blade with the satin flats on the stone wash finish is really nice. And then the anodization on the handle is, or excuse me, the stone wash on the anno is awesome. It's really well done. This purple, blurple color is really cool too. Um, they, I liked the green as well. And the gold, I, you know, all the, actually all the colors looked really nice and the, with the stone washing on the finish. So I really dug um, that. So fit and finish on this is really, really good. Um, there is no movement of the lock bar. You cannot push that over at all, which is a oddly like thing that you wouldn't think would be a big deal, but I've been experiencing it in a lot of frame locks lately where you can literally just push that over. Um, recent ZT I had did that. It was crazy. Um, I don't no, definitely not on the Riot. Wouldn't think so. That's definitely not something you can do on a Sabenza. So it's one of those things that was kind of surprising that I've seen a few times recently. So that is something important to note because uh, that's definitely part of fit and finish is getting that lock up good. Uh, it does have a solid lock up at about uh, 30, 40%, 35% with that steel lock bar insert. So very nice. You have a ceramic um, detent ball and ceramic bearings in this as well. So everything's great on the fit and finish. Uh, ergonomics, great. Really good ergonomics. Um, handle is is super nice. It's a very neutral handle design. You hear me say that a lot of my videos, neutral handle design. What does that mean? It means there's not a ton of like um, predetermined choils and places where you've got a finger grooves, you know, where you have to hold the knife. That The problem with those is they work with some, like here's an example. Here's the Wii Shard, or the Civivi Shard. It's got very, very, a lot of grooves, right? It works good for my hand, but someone with bigger hands, it's not going to work at all. And that's the nice thing about this knife is I think this knife can work with any one size hands. Um, I don't have I don't know where it says medium glove, and it fits my hand about perfect. But if you had larger hands, you're still going to be okay. Uh, I know like Epic Snuggle Bunny in his review, he's got larger hands, and he had no problem with um, this knife. So ergonomics is great, and it's very comfortable in the hand. Um, it's a pr pretty much a perfect size for me uh, for EDC, and I just love this three and a quarter inch to three inch blade is really my wheelhouse these days and I think it's about perfect the only thing I would probably change ergonomically is there's kind of a weird so this where this part of the handle comes up and it it's pretty well rounded they did a good job here but it kind of naturally gets a, like a sharp uh, and maybe it's from the clip more but it's um, kind of just a sharp angle right there and it kind of gets in your hand you don't really notice it but it could if you had a certain hand type. It's just it's a small thing. It's really not to take away from the ergonomics, but it is kind of there. So I wanted to mention it. Um, and then the other thing I would change is the jimping. There is a lack, or lack of jimping. I would like to see some right here on the thumb ramp. Jimping on the thumb ramp. Um, it just adds a little bit more. It's kind of a slicker handle, too, with the titanium. So it would be nice to have a little jimping to kind of lock your finger in there. Other than that, I have really no other complaints about ergonomics. Aesthetically, you know, what does the knife look like? How is it, you know, is it, is it a good looking knife? Is it pleasing to the eye? I like the simplistic design. To me, that is a pleasing to the eye. To some, that might not be. They might think it's boring. Um, I like it. Uh, I, I think it looks really nice. I think the anno colors are great. I think, you know, it's just a, a good looking knife. Um, I like that, again, I, I mentioned the multiple anodization options. And the polished chamfers and the satin flash and the stone washing, all of that is part of the aesthetics and it really adds a lot to it. Um, I do wish that they would kind of, the colors on the Anno, as far as the handle are great, but the, the some of the way they matched up the color ionization options with the colors, I just didn't think it flowed well. Um, and if they had a more of a bronze to this, this is definitely more gold in my opinion uh, than bronze. And it's not like way bright gold, but it's, I mean, I've, I wish I had a... Well, I do. Hold on. Let's see if I can give you a comparison of colors. This is a decent comparison here. So the bronze on this Civivi Statera, and that is bronze. So you see the difference. This is more gold. This is like a darker. So I think that would have looked better. So they kind of need to dial in their anodization as far as their colors go a little bit, um, as far as when they call it bronze. So other than that, um, that's it. I mean, the aesthetics are great on it. 
Action. Okay, so it's on ceramic bearings and it has a ceramic detent. So I kind of expect it to be ultra smooth and it's definitely smooth um, as far as the action is concerned there. Where the action kind of suffers a little bit is the flipping and that didn't look bad, right? I mean, that was not bad at all. I put some KPL on here. It flips, um, but I found it um, that it's it's getting better too, what, which was one thing I've noticed. When I first got it, I had a few failed flips on the flipper. Um, it just doesn't have a strong detent. It doesn't have a, what I would call a dialed in detent. I think it could use a little detent work. It's a little soft to medium on the detent. And it is actually, like I said, getting better, which is interesting that it would improve, but it could be a little snappier as far as a flipper is concerned. That's one thing I would say. I've had my finger slip off the tab a few times. Now it does have jimping right there and it worked there. Um, I found that if you light switch it, it works better than trying to push button it. And, and it's funny, I'm sitting here on camera and I can't get it to stop. <laughs> I can't get it to fail flipping, but it, it's happened a few times. So maybe, like I said, maybe the action's breaking in and it's, it's getting better, but I would say it still needs a little bit stronger detent. That's to more to my um, liking. All right, that's all about action. But like I said, it is very smooth, like it drops pretty well once you disengage the lock. It, you know, it's pretty smooth action, so. All right, so what I call sliceability, and what does that mean? Well, that means how well the knife slices. Does it have super thick blade stock? Is it thick behind the edge? Is it thin behind the edge? You know, is it hollow ground, flat ground, those kind of things. So our blade stock is 0.146, is like I got the thickest area here, um, which isn't, horrible but it's it's pretty it's pretty stout you know not the stoutest but it's it could be thinner um 0 0.2 0 0.026 behind the edge is the thinnest i could find which isn't bad um but it's also not like way slicey like oh man this thing is going to just be the greatest slicer right it's not i i think this savivi um why 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 i can't think of the name all of a sudden um was like what was it point one something it was re oh i left my calipers in the other room it was way thin behind the edge and that always adds to sliceability always and then if you have a thinner blade stock um like comparing these two you can see that the blade stock is thinner on this one and that's going to help with the being a better slicer thicker blade stock is going to help it be a little bit more stout right um but for what most of us do in our adcs you can see there it is next to the um Tashi, which has a thicker, it's about the same thickness. I wish my calipers were in this room. They're not. <laughs> and how about the Sabenza? It's going to be thicker for sure. Yeah. And this is definitely, these single blades are very slicey. You can improve that with, um, you know, taking some, thinning out the edge a little bit with um, sharpening it to a, like a 15 to 17 degree edge, you know, that can help. Um, but it, so it's, it's, and it's flat ground. Um, I think hollow grounds grinds tend to be a little slicer for me, but that's just opinion. That's kind of a preference thing. I think a lot of flat grinds can be good slicers too. So it's not like the thickest knife on the edge. It's also not the thickest blade stock, but it's a little more than I like. I like a little bit thinner um, blade stock, a little bit thinner behind the edge, just for EDC tasks and stuff. I don't need a super stout blade that you know for most of my tasks that I do. So I, I prefer it on the slicier side. Um, so this would definitely be a good working knife as far as that goes concerned. And it's not a horrible slicer by any means. Um, it's not too thick, but it's, you know, kind of there in the, on the edge of being too thick for me, for what I like. Might not bug you at all. So, and a lot of people don't even think about that. All right. Uh, carry options. It carries nicely. It is thin, you know, half an inch thick in the handle. It's relatively light, 3.6 ounces. There is some lightning pockets in the titanium on the frame lock or the show side and a little teeny one on the frame lock side um maybe like the i think the back spacer being that full adds a lot of weight and i would have like actually preferred standoffs i'm usually not a big back spacer guy so that would have cut down it's a, kind of a heavier it's not heavy but it's under four ounces but you know there's a lot of knives in this size range like the 940 for example quite a bit lighter um i mean your full tie knives that are lighter um the sabenza Obviously, it's a little bit smaller, and I want to say the Tashi is about the same, and it's about the same size. So it's right or probably right where it should be for weight. It could be a little lighter if you didn't have that, if you had standoffs instead of that big full uh, backspacer. And the clip, it works well. Uh, let me grab my... <laughs> a belt on 
here still, so this is going to throw this off a little bit. So it's going to be a little stiffer because the belt's pretty stiff, but it shows you kind of how it carries. It's not deep carry by any means, um, but I mean, it's pretty deep actually. You don't have a whole lot of knives sitting up, and it, it's, a, it's a well executed clip. It's titanium, but it has nice spacing and it has um, good spring to it, so it carries well. Um, value is very good, man. I mean, it's huge. The value is massive. It's uh, 190 bucks for this knife. For titanium, anodization, for M390. I mean, the steel is M390, if I haven't mentioned that. That's kind of weird that I haven't mentioned that until now. It's pretty hard to beat. I can't think of too many knives that offer ceramic detent, bearings, M390 steel, anode handle. You know, like, I don't, I can't think of too many in this size especially, maybe a little ones that are smaller maybe, but I can't even think of one that's under 200 bucks. It's a great deal, and that was kind of his idea was to bring a very, uh, make a really nice knife with premium materials and make it really affordable. And he did that, and I think that's why he went with Best Tech. Maybe they were able to make it a little more affordable than some of the other companies, so. But yeah, value is incredibly good, like really hard to beat. So the last thing is the X Factor. What is the X Factor? That could be something that just kind of sets this knife apart from another knife. Um, you know, something that just like really speaks to you when you pick it up in your hand. You say, man, I really like this. Maybe it's the aesthetics. Maybe it's the action. Maybe it could be any of these things that I talked about. This one really doesn't have it for me, though. It's like, it's I don't know why. It's it's a good knife. It's solid. Um, maybe I think if the, I think the action bugs me enough that it doesn't like have that, like, yes, I, you know. I, I think it's a great size, it's ergonomic, it's, it's you know, handles well, it's got great value. I mean, there's so many positives, but I can't really determine uh, this time what that X factor is for me. Um, like on the the baby machine, it's got to be the this just smoothest action. I mean, very different feeling, and it's just, uh, man, every time I pick it up and I use it, and it's the it's the handle shape, it's the fit and finish on it. It's just so good. So there's some X factors there. For me on this one, I just can't think of one thing that jumps out. Everything's done well, um, minus maybe the detent, but it's not like and just nothing really jumps out. So I can't really say there's an X factor for this knife. So, all right, guys, I think maybe it's the value. Maybe it's such such a good value that that's one reason why. It'll stay around in my collection, and, and I'll, you know, it'll make my EDC rotation because it's such a good deal, you know, for what you get. Maybe that can be the X factor, but typically that's not one that for me that that is one. So, all right, guys, that's gonna wrap up the video on the Purvis, Purvis, Purvis blades um, progeny. Any questions or comments? Leave them down below, and we'll see you on the next video.